So what I'm doing today is a winter forecast, kind of a winter birds I want you to be on the look for. Uh, Mark Robbins, who's a curator of birds over at the KU Museum of Natural History, he loves that we, uh, you know, my, this customer base uh, is very good at documenting and, and sending in pictures uh, of birds that are unusual so he can keep up with them and, and, and things like eBird, which is a, a database, of, a national database of bird sightings. All that's really important information to scientists. And so us citizens, citizen science, um, they, they contribute to that through you know, open eyes. So Because we have a lot more eyes out there looking at feeders and looking at birds than there are biologists out there in the field uh, to document things. So if I want to go through some of these birds here with you. And please, if you see anything that you really don't recognize, the cell phones take really good pictures. I can blow them up and I can easily discern them. I, you know, people send me in pictures just about every day to identify. So I want you to, uh, some of the birds to be on the alert for that, you know, uh, move, classically move in drought years out of the west and come east. So let's get started. This is a, a northern invader. Um, last year we had one up in St. Joe. Uh, this is a white wing crossbill. He has a the really funny bill. He's going to be, feed, he's a finch and he feeds with the finches. So we have winter plumage American goldfinches here. And down here in this corner, hopefully you can see it, uh, is a goldfinch with stripes. And those are pine siskins. And those, one, one guy over in St. Louis had 175 pine siskins in his yard one day a week or more ago. So um, the birds are on the move. These, went, these northern birds, uh, like the siskin and the, and the crossbill, have already been documented, especially in the east, uh, moving, moving further south. And we expect them to move here too. So um, watch your finch feeders because finch feeders are are really good for these birds to show up at. Um, let's see. Oh, Bruce Backyard. This is a goldfinch, but this bird here, look at all the stripes here and all the stripes here. And then that black face with the yellow bill, that is a common red pole. And those birds are really expected to be moving south this winter. And they're really thinking we're going to see a lot of those down in the heart of the, heart of the United States. So be on the look for uh, an, any unusual finch on your finch feeders. Uh, well, most people don't uh, consider, um, they don't think crossbills are finches. They are. Look, you can see here, hopefully you can see how good um, those bill that bill is crossed there. This is a red cross bill, and these are much more common than that first white wing that I showed you. Again, they're usually going to be feeding with your finches. They may be on sunflower seed, but a lot of times they're on your finch feeders, eating the Niger and the sunflower chips right with the goldfinches. So be on the lookout for a big red finch not, uh, that, that may be feeding. And look at that really funny bill. Because And again, try to get pictures if you do see them and, and send them in, and we will um, try to get them officially documented. But this year, aside from our, you know, the purple finches that we are already starting to see good numbers of, uh, be, uh, and, and with your house, remember, they're not house finches, uh, and the win they're both in the winter, we can get both of them, but the purple finches don't have any brown striping on the sides, like our house finches that nest here, so watch for the purple finches. I always say they look like somebody grabbed them and dunked them in raspberry Kool-Aid, because they kind of have this reddish, purplish wash all over their feathers everywhere, where a house finch is, where it's brown, it's brown, and where it's red, it's red. So be on the lookout with the, for the purple finches. They, they are big eaters too. So you, you have them moving on your bird feeders, you're gonna to wanna to restock because they eat very, very heavily. And we've already been seeing a lot of the red-breasted nuthatches. They are, they are really in, in good numbers. Peanuts, sunflower hearts, sunflower chips, um, the suet, they'll eat on that too, but they really love peanuts. So um, keep your peanut feeders well stocked with the, for their little red-breasted nuthatches. But some of these really unusual birds I want you to uh, keep an eye out for are, let's get them going, okay. Mountain bluebirds, believe it or not. Watch for, we have our eastern bluebirds are coming in in good numbers from the north, and we'll have, we've already had flocks of eight, nine, 10, 12 uh, bluebirds reported at people's bird bass, and even eating some of the sunflower chips. 
but the mountain bluebirds are being seen in Kansas now. That's a mountain species that, again, drought years push them out. And he is solid blue. They got beautiful. There's a friend of mine took this uh, picture in uh, New Mexico one winter. We were down there bird watching. But they will show up in Missouri. So watch for an all blue bluebird. Uh, this is a, a, a this the, the bill's the same. Everything. They're a little bit larger than the eastern bluebird, but it's, it's not not really noticeable. But they may be mixed in with other bluebirds, and they may be on their own. But that's a bird to be watching for in these drought, uh, when there's droughts in the west and, and here. And, they, and probably the best place in your backyard would be at a bird bath, trying to get water. Another bird from the west that we're already seeing, have already had reported, and Carrie's over there smiling because she saw one just last week. This is a spotted towhee. Uh, the towhee, we see eastern towhees. Here in the nesting season, they nest here, and some, you know, sometimes they're scratching under your bird feeders, especially early in the spring. Well, in the fall, the spotted towhees, which are in, in the, from the mountains out west, move into the plains. And October is the month we start to see them, and we got reports of them, several reports of, of spotted towhees in the area right now. So be watching for these out in the bushes, and they like to scratch like a chicken. They kick the kick the leaves around underneath your feeders and kick around, and they're trying to pick up seeds. So. The spotted towhees are, are, are another bird from the west that we really are looking for this winter. And then uh, some of the, one of the northern invaders, which is a truly prized bird anymore. If you're a long time bird, bird feeding person, uh, you, I mean, you fed birds 30, 50, 40 years ago. You remember these birds. These are evening grosbeaks. And evening grosbeaks used to come in in invasion years uh, from the north and ferocious seeds. I mean, my goodness, they eat sunflower and safflower seeds. They just gobble them up. Well, we've hardly seen any in the last 25, 30 years in, in, down here in Missouri. And they're already seeing evening growth peaks as far as south as Florida on the east coast this winter. So this is one we really think we're going to get a chance to see this winter. So I want you to be on the lookout for them. The males are, in, you know, unmistakable. They look like a big husky uh, a goldfinch superficially. But remember, the goldfinches aren't that bright yellow this time of year, so the, he would really stand out to you at your bird feeders. But it's the, the females and the young birds, like here on this side, that are the ones that are a little bit harder to make, you know, because they, do, they don't pop out quite as much. But look at the size of that bill. It's a big cardinal-sized bill, and, you know, a little bit larger than a cardinal period. And this is one of the females. And by the way, credit, these, these pictures are from... Um, the Cornell website because I don't have any eating grosbeaks because they haven't been here for 30 years to, to really take pictures of. So I uh, borrowed these off of there. So just to give you for education purposes, be on the lookout for these big birds on your bird feeders. Really, really, uh, I think it's our best winter chance to see them in a very, very long time. Another backyard bird that you really should be on the lookout at your bird bass especially is the varied thrush. And yes, it very much looks like a robin, but it's a western thrush. And they are they move eastward in drought years. And I, I photographed one at a friend's bird bath up in Plattsburgh. Yes, Plattsburgh, several, many years ago in a driving snowstorm. There was this uh, heated bird bath and she had this one varied thrush that was coming uh, to that heated bird bath. Uh, a lot of times they are associated with robins because they, they very much the... Uh, so in a flock of robins, you may see one, but this is a bird really be on the look for. I mean, uh, they, this bird could show up this year with this with these drought conditions. And then other birds that we don't think we don't think about coming out of the West are, are not just songbirds, but uh, birds of prey, like um, the Harris's hawk. The Harris's hawk is a desert Southwest bird. But they tend to show they can get driven uh, to the east whenever there's uh, harsh conditions out west. And this year, with the fires and and the drought, uh, this is a bird you should be on the lookout. You've seen this bird in movies a lot because a lot of times when there's a a hawk uh, being used in a movie for filming, they use this bird. The Harris's hawks are very smart birds. They're very trainable, and so a lot of stunt birds, if you will, for movies are Harris's hawks. So. Um, beautiful red shoulders, the white and the tip on the tail, white under the tail. Very colorful birds. Very uh, so that, that's another bird you can be looking for when you're out in the field. And then no, a northern hawk from uh, that we get in years like this will be the rough-legged hawk. And this is going to be every bit as big as a red-tailed hawk, um, but the coloring is distinct. You know, we've got the the very black belly. 
and then black shoulder patches and a black band across the tail. That's the one to be looking for along roadsides here because in the next month is going to be the raptor invasion. This is for the next month we start to see you know kestrels increase and red tails increase. But this is whenever we might get rough leggers move in with those too. So a lot of birds to be on the look for, uh, look out for in an invasion year. And this is a double whammy. This is a western drought, and also it seems to be a food shortage um, year in the north. And then finches are being driven. So again, the chances are really cool birds at your bird feeders uh, to join your your typical cardinals and chickadees and titmice and things like that. So. Did you get um, you know, there's some other, uh, Lewis's woodpecker is one that's possible, um, you know, uh, named after Meriwether Lewis from Lewis and Clark's uh, exploration. Beautiful bird. They're very nomadic and they move a lot. But again, because of the forest fires, especially out in Colorado and stuff, we may have Lewis's woodpeckers move into the area. And they like to settle in areas of, of uh, large areas of dead timber. So um, again, be on the lookout for anything really that's, uh, that's unusual to you and snap pictures, you know, that make sure and uh, send them in and we'll get, try to get them identified. So uh, winter invaders, it makes word feeders that much more exciting, you know, when, uh, and this year I think we're going to have a really good winter for that. So uh, thanks for the idea for the program. We've had a lot of a lot of calls about seeing these unusual birds and reports on the internet. So wanted to address that. Send in ideas for future programs. Give us a like. Give us a share. Till then, come by. Let's talk birds.